Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Patty. And if you've seen the title of the video, there are probably some of you out there who are thinking, oh great, more food that we can't eat or more food that I'm supposed to eliminate from my diet. And while that's partly true, I want you to go into this video, um, you know, realizing that knowledge is power. And what I'm gonna talk about today is just another layer of the complex tapestry that is our health and um, what works for us as individuals and the journey of nutrition. People ask me all the time, um, you know, patients, friends, um, what is the perfect diet for me? And the reality is, although there are food allergy tests out there and um, different kinds of diets, there is no one diet that really, really works for everyone or even you as an individual. A lot of it is is trial and error to some extent and that is the gold standard for actually communicating with your body so in today's video I'm going to talk about some seemingly healthy foods that may cause some issues for people and I want you to just think of this as literally just more data you know the more information we have the more data we have it allows us to create more sophisticated um, results and outcomes and trials. So, you know, down the road, this may give you a little bit of um, information to try something else or, you know, to be able to listen to your body a little bit better. So don't be frustrated and, um, you know, understand that knowledge truly is power. And the whole point of these videos in this community really is to empower all of you because Dr. Angela and I, um, you know, obviously you can only see one patient at a time in our offices, but um, we really want to help educate. So with that said, some of these seemingly healthy foods that can cause uh, inflammation and weight gain um, and leaky gut and autoimmune disease and you know a whole slew of health issues are caused by something called lectins. Now these are, what are lectins? Lectins are proteins in plants that um, cause some harm to those who ingest them. And the reason why is it's actually quite interesting and beautiful, you know, plants out in nature, unlike animals, can't run away from their predators. And so they've developed mechanisms to try to protect themselves. Plants, some, you know, don't necessarily want to be eaten or devoured or harmed. Um, so they have their own mechanisms to preserve themselves. They are living beings after all. Um, so, uh, you know, they whether it be from bugs or animals or any kind of predators, they've created these inflammatory proteins that in us, when we eat them, bind to certain molecules, specifically certain sugar molecules, maybe on our nerves, in our gut, um, in our blood. And it kind of messes with the communication that our body has with our immune system. And then that subsequently leads to things like autoimmune disease and weight gain in a lot of people. And so um, foods that are high in lectins include the following. One being grains, so um, obviously breads and pastas and things like that, but also whole grains. Um, and, you know, again, this list that I'm going to go through, if you're not sensitive to it, um, you know, you, you don't necessarily need to omit all of these from your nutrition or your diet plan. Um, so number two is legumes. Now these would include beans, lentils, peanuts, and one way that you can actually, two ways actually, that you can reduce and also eliminate the lectins in legumes is to one, soak them. So soaking legumes in general um, removes phytic acid and um, helps to sprout and release some enzymes, which makes it easier on the digestive system. But um, that helps a little bit. Now to remove lectins completely, you can actually cook them in a pressure cooker and that will remove the lectins. So um, even more bone bonus points for uh, the famous Instant Pot that everyone's loving. I personally love mine. I don't know if you have an Instant Pot. If you do, leave a comment below and tell me what your favorite uh, recipes are. 
But yeah, you can cook these legumes in your Instant Pot and help uh, eliminate those lectins. And of um, legumes, kidney beans tend to have the highest amount of lectins, just FYI. Um, and then number three, and this is one of those healthy foods that might sound surprising, is squashes. So pumpkins, butternut squash, yellow squash, zucchini um, tend to be high in lectins. And you can lower the level of lectins by removing the seeds um, and also peeling. But at that point, um, you know, you've removed a lot of the flavor. So um, I, if I'm sensitive to lectins and I'm sensitive to zucchini, I'd rather just opt for a different vegetable. But you can um, kind of uh, do a little bit of a lectin hack that way. Number four is fruit. So of course, fruit has many vitamins and minerals and micronutrients and fiber. Um, but again, if it is causing you harm or inflammation, um, fruit is not necessarily the best option for you. Um, and if you are gonna eat fruit, definitely best to eat local um, in-season fruit. So, you know, don't be eating papayas in the wintertime or blueberries when they're not in season. So, and you know, just as a little bit of a side note, whether it's naturopathic medicine or Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic medicine, so many different systems of holistic medicine recognize that our body is connected to nature and our body wants to be eating with the seasons. Um, so we wanna be doing that anyway, but um, as a plus, it actually helps to reduce that lectin load. Um, and then number five is another category of vegetables called nightshades. So many of you have, um, have heard of nightshades before and how they can cause some inflammation. And many people know that they're sensitive to these nightshades. And these include peppers, um, bell peppers, as well as other peppers, potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants. Um, so if you are sensitive, you may want to um, avoid these high lectin nightshades as well. So. Before you eliminate everything, I really want to um, kind of uh, not make you too nervous and say that, yes, do lectins cause inflammation in general? Absolutely. Um, are some people more sensitive to them than others? Absolutely. You know, what I prescribe in terms of a treatment plan or nutrition to an uh, 18 year old who's wanting to prevent chronic disease and um, just be healthy and well versus what I might prescribe to um, a 50 year old patient who's got diabetes or metabolic disease is going to be completely different. This 50 year old patient with diabetes may not do well even on blueberries, which is super healthy. So it's not just about like, oh, lectins are bad, remove these foods. Um, gluten is bad, remove gluten. Um, it is really about where your how full your bucket is, where you are in the process of your health and chronic disease. And then also specific to lectins and lectin high foods, I do want to say that if you are someone who's got autoimmune disease, you know, whether that's Hashimoto's, which you've, we've done a couple of um, videos on, um, hypo, Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, um, you know, research is showing that even endometriosis is actually being seen as an autoimmune disease, not just a hormonal disease. So if you've got autoimmune issues, um, if you've got leaky gut, if you've got digestive issues, joint issues, then um, it might behoove you to maybe try removing some excess lectins in your diet and see if that helps to lower um, the inflammatory load and helps to strengthen your immune system. Also, if you are trying to balance your blood sugar or trying to lose some body fat or lean up or build a little bit of muscle and you've tried everything and nothing is working, obviously reducing stress, balancing hormones, reducing toxicity is at the tippy top, but you may want to add this you know, kind of um, very specific layer of removing lectins and see if that just gives your body enough um, help to lessen the burden and be able to move forward in your health journey. So again, um, kind of depends on where you are, but this is just another option to um, give yourself uh, another chance to uh, try different things, trial and error, communicate with your body. And that's really the most important thing. You know, health is... Um, 
the art of medicine. It's not actually completely a science. And so learning to communicate with your body is a huge part of that journey. And that's what we're here to do and try to help you with. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you think somebody might benefit from this video, please feel free to share. And Dr. Angela and I will be back and we'll see you back here soon. Thank you so much for